Hey everybody, how are you doing? Um, so this is my first time um, kind of doing a lesson and actually providing some information. Um, the reason why I made this quick little tutorial blog post and now video screen grab capture is because um, I build a lot of WordPress sites and um, I had heard about this service called Amazon Light Sale. And um, one of the things that I found, and I'm sure many of you have found, is that a lot of web hosts are, um, are fairly slow at running WordPress. Um, I've used many different hosts in the past, and um, the only ones that I found that were actually any good or very fast were like WP Engine or SiteGround, you know, sites, you know, hosts, web hosts that are, um, fair, you know, they're fast, but you pay a premium for them. And so when I saw that um, Amazon had this service called Light Sale and it said, hey, host your WordPress site for $5, I thought, wow, I should check this out. And I just so happened to have a friend who was transferring his host from somebody else. And so he asked me if I would manage it for him. And I said, sure. And I thought, hey, this is the perfect time to use Amazon Light Sale. By the way, just as a side note, I'm not getting paid by Amazon. This isn't a sponsored video. This is just totally me providing um, just my own advice and thoughts on the service um, to all my developer friends. So anyway, um, I thought I'd give it a try. $5 a month and they claim it's super fast and blazing hosting. So I thought, what the heck? Well, the thing that I found was that um, because um, essentially Amazon Light Sale is an Amazon EC2 instance and the whole thing, and it's it's really a ser you know kind of a server deployment thing. It was a lot more complicated than just firing up an FTP program and exporting my database and and all of those things. There was there were a bunch more steps involved, and it probably took me the first go around two three hours to set up um, my friend's website on LightSail. But the one thing I have to say is once I got it running, it was fast, very fast. And the thing I found about LightSail is that, uh, and I've consistently found this when I've recommended LightSail to people, is that the hosting is blazing fast. And for five bucks a month, you just can't beat it. So anyway, I thought, hey, why don't I put together this little blog post that outlines, you know, all the, basically how to do it from start to finish if, and I want to stress this, that this blog post and this whole video is for people who develop their WordPress sites locally and want to move their site from their local host up to LightSail. Now, um, I will say that Amazon, when you, when you create an instance, a WordPress instance, and you log into it, there is a tool that will migrate it for you from another, uh, from another site. So there is an automated tool. So like, because of that, if you just want to go that route, this blog post and video for you is completely unnecessary. But as I found, and I'm sure the rest of you will know, is that over time is that sometimes the manual way is the only way that you can do things. Like for example, if you have a client that has a, a blog that's like, you know, the database is, you know, 500 megabytes, you know, how are you going to get that 500 megabyte database you know, over to, you know, it's not going to work with a, it's not going to work with a migration tool, at least I've found that to be the case. So anyway, the manual way is the best way. Uh, and so that's what this video covers. This video assumes that you know how to, um, you know, FTP into a website and upload all the necessary files. It assumes you know how to use PHP my admin to import and export the database. And then basically from there on as well, it assumes that you know how to, you know which fields in the database you need to change to have the site show up and whatnot. And it also assumes that once you have uploaded all these things, you need to go to your registrar for the domain and change the A record to point to the IP address of the server. So, um, but I mean, again, this video is just for people that want to, who develop WordPress sites locally and want to get it up to light sail. So here we go. Sorry for the long intro. I, that was probably five minutes, way too long. Hopefully you can skip ahead. I'll put that down in the notes, how to just skip right to it. So let's go to my screen here. And first thing you want to do here is we're, I'm just going to walk through this whole thing. 
If you want to create an instance, obviously you click this button right here, which will create an instance. And um, then uh, after that, the next screen is you'll want to select Unix, Linux, and WordPress. Um, and then when you go down to the next step here, you can choose what plan you want. Generally, I find the $3.50 plan or the $5 a month plan is pretty good. You don't need anything beyond that. Next thing is uh, you want to name your instance. Uh, generally, I always name the instance um, based on the web domain. Right here, I have my website domain. That's just a placeholder. Whatever your domain is, just put that name in there. So, so after you've done that, you'll click the Create button right here. And then it'll bring you back to the screen and you'll see you'll see your uh, your new instance fired up here. The next thing you're going to need to do is um, you're going to click this networking tab and you're going to and then when the when the next screen comes up, you're going to click this create a static IP. And um, the reason why you want to create a static IP is that when you point your domain name to that IP, you don't want that IP ever changing. So it's a good idea to have a static IP. So after you click that, you're going to get another screen here that pops up and you're going to select your instance, which is the one we just created, my website domain or whatever one, whatever one you created. And then you're going to give your, your static IP a name. Again, I follow the naming convention of your domain name and this time and along with the domain name, I do .com. Then you click create. And then the next step is you want to create a SSH key pair. So, um, so in the upper right corner, you'll see you'll see an account. You'll click on that, and that'll bring you to this screen here. And you'll click this create new, and then down here, um, I mean, this modal will pop up, and it'll say create new SSH key pair. Again, I always name it the domain name just so that I, you know, this is purely just for your own informational purposes. You could call it whatever you want, but I think it's a good idea just to have all of the domain stuff all tied together. So you'll type in a name and then you'll click this generate key pair. And then that this modal will go away and you'll go back to this screen here and you'll just You'll click the download link and it'll it'll warn you. It'll say you can only download this key one time. So so just save it to your computer. Um, so so the next thing you need to do is you need to get your application's password. And so in order to get to this screen here, you're gonna click on you're gonna you're gonna click on when from your home dashboard, you'll click on this here. And then basically, it'll bring you to this screen here. And you're going to click this connect using SSH. And what that does is that opens up a window, which is a terminal to, to on your server. And you're going to you're going to copy this line of text right here. This is the command that you want, you're just going to copy that. And when this window uh, when this terminal window pops up in the corner, you want to click this little clipboard icon. And when that opens, you're going to paste. You're going to paste that password or that command that you just copied. You're going to paste that into this window. You click this again, and then and then you're going to once this closes, just right click in, just right click in this terminal window, and it will paste in the code that you just. That you just copied and it'll paste it into the terminal for you and you're going to press enter and once you do that you're the next thing that's going to get spit out is you're going to get your password that i've highlighted right here and then what you want to do is you want to highlight the password and then you're going to click you're going to click this uh this little clipboard icon and when you when this opens up your password is going to be in that box you can just copy that out the reason why you're doing this whole clipboard thing is you're basically cutting and copying from the terminal. And this is the only way that you can do that. Otherwise, you have to manually type this information. And so the copy, the copying way is better because it reduces your chance of error. So anyway, so once you once you get your application password, now you're ready to connect 
to PHP my admin. And so what you're going to do is you're going to create what's called an SSH tunnel. And an SSH tunnel, what that does is it basically kind of sets your local host to the server so that you can connect there. It's just a more secure way of doing things. So the so basically what you want to do is you're going to want to open a terminal window and you're going to want to go to the same folder in your terminal where that um, that PEM file is that you downloaded. And if you're I mean, you don't have to, but you're going to have to you're going to have to tell, you know, in this command here, you're going to have to you put the location of the PEM file in here. And it's easier if you're just in the folder, it's easier to run this command from the folder. And then the other thing is you want to replace the IP address with your IP address. So you want to make sure that the PEM file name is the one that you downloaded. And then you're going to want to make sure that this IP is the same as the, the public IP of your, of your instance. So, um, so yeah, so then you would just copy this whole line you're going to you're going to paste that into the terminal and when you do that it's going to run a command it's going to run a command and it's going to if it's successful you won't see any errors and you'll just see your cursor kind of blinking here like this that means that you were successful in connecting and then what you want to do is you want to go to this address right here so you just you can just copy this and then in your browser you can just you know you can just paste it right here and um, and go to that and that's going to bring you to PHP my admin and that's where you're going to import your database and what you can do what generally I do is in there you'll see it'll say like um, it'll say like bitnami wordpress or like the name of the database will be completely clear like oh this is the this is the one that was set up when I created the instance. You can just drop all the tables in that database and then just import, you know, your own database in there. Or you can you can create a new one if you want to. Okay, so that's basically how you connect to PHP MyAdmin to migrate your database up there. Um, the next thing that you can do is connect via FTP. So what you're going to do is you're going to use an FTP client, whether it's FileZilla or some other program. And I'm using FileZilla. And you can see I, I select, um, this should actually be SFTP, not FTP. So I'm probably going to have to replace this image. But in the host, you want to put your public IP address. And then, you want, and then you're going to want to put the username and um, you're actually going to want where it says log on, log on type. You're going to want to say key. In fact, I got to change this. But you're going to, and then when, then right here, there's going to be a little link that you click to um, to basically put in your PEM file. So when you click that, you'll browse to where your PEM file is. You'll select that, and then you'll click connect, and it'll connect to your server. And um, and then basically this is the folder structure. So, so when you get there, you'll click on the apps shortcut, you'll click on the WordPress, and then it'll take you to your WordPress directory. Um, and that's pretty much it. Then all you have to do is because WordPress is already installed for you when the instance was created, all you have to do is basically upload your theme and your plugins that you're using and your and then your uploads folder. So pretty much what I do is just kind of replace the whole uh, WP content folder um, and then basically you just have in the you don't have to edit the config file or anything because it's already as long as you've used the default database and just imported your your database into that default uh, database that they gave you don't have to change the the WP config file at all um, the one thing that I did find is um, basically um, you, if if you have trouble copying folders up, because what happens is a lot of times is like the the folder permissions on the server are set up to where it'll let you create stuff, but it doesn't let you delete anything, and so you'll probably have to open the terminal and run each of these commands. 
So basically you're going to do what we did in step three, where you're going to, you're going to connect, you're going to click this connect using SSH. And when this terminal pops up, you're going to want to run this command and you're going to want to run this command. And then, and then when you FTP to the site, you won't have any problems deleting uh, folders and, and, and overwriting folders. And um, the only other thing that I would add, we're pretty much done. The only other thing that I would add is that in order to send emails uh, or web form mails, like say you're using contact form seven, the only way that you're going to be able to send those contact forms or email those out is using a plugin called WP Mail SMTP. And so whoever your mail provider is, your email provider is, they should have SMTP settings. And so you just install that plugin and just put those SMTP settings in and your web forms will send just fine. So other than that, that's it. I mean, I know that um, this doesn't, it, it may or may not seem complicated, but this took me many hours to compile and to kind of write all this stuff down because I had to kind of pull all these pieces of information together from other websites and and kind of this whole and kind of outline this whole process because I've never seen a guide that just says here's how you connect your local host, here's how you get to PHP my admin, here's how you here's how you FTP into the site, and so I thought, hey, why don't I put this together and make it really simple for someone who knows how to uh, deploy a WordPress website to HostGator or GoDaddy or whatever, and show them how to do it on LightSail because now you're saving money by getting, and, and on top of that, you're getting super fast hosting for an extremely low price. So anyway, so that's my tutorial. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. And um, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And um, I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you.